So how you been, mate? All good. Yeah, apart yeah. from I've got, I've been playing a bit of golf and I've somehow I've got this plantar fasciitis. Oh yes, I've done that. On my heel, it's killing me. Yeah, I did that about three years ago playing cricket. I had to wear a boot. I had to wear a boot for about three, three, four weeks. Oh, There's mate, a running it. theme with you two former goalkeepers, can I say? You're both <laughs> <No>. crooked. <laughs> no, we're both old. <laughs> That's, That's the thing with that age now where things start to happen to you that you've got no control over. Yeah. Well, I, I played cricket literally about 10, eight days, nine days ago. I pulled my hamstring, like proper pulled it running for the ball. So yeah, I've been uh, I've been on the uh, treatment table. <laughs> Are your reactions just as good though? Like a cat. <laughs> Adopted cat. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> There's what, what I wanted to ask you um, is how we, I love that. <laughs> I need a little bit of is, refreshment. Yeah. Ava just produced a beer already. Yeah. We won't say what time we're recording. No, it's actually it's it's late <laughs> enough. It's fine. Yeah. Um, one of the questions I wanted to ask you was um, how much has Goldie been changed since we were around? Because I know that you've been coaching until yeah, you know, quite recently. Yeah. What do you want me to answer now or, or leave it till later? I do now. Yeah, it's cool. fine. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, like you were fortunate, very fortunate that you had Bob Wilson as your goalkeeping coach because a lot of clubs didn't have goalkeeping coaches. I can remember all the clubs in London having a get together with their goalkeepers at Bisham Abbey to be coached by Bob Wilson, Mike Kelly, oh, yeah. Alan Hodgkinson, and yeah. Eric. I think Eric still was a goalkeeper. He, no, he was still playing in Eric Steele. Because I remember he, they had cones, and you know, like you, you hit shots, and a cone hit a cone, spun up in the air, and split his eye. Oh, did he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, this is this is one of the courses that you know was run by the goalkeeping coaches. But say so we didn't all have goalkeeping coaches. But obviously, as years have progressed, you know, I've gone into goalkeeping coaching and. Yeah. And you you have to adjust and adapt with with the times. You know, when me and you were playing, the ball come back to us. It was either you could pick it up, or you weren't yeah. allowed to pick it up, and you just humped it as far as you could really get. It. You know, we didn't try and play out the back. But obviously nowadays, the more ball retention is 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 important in in team styles of playing. So we have to bring that into our goalkeeping training. Um, yeah. They have to. I mean, I did. Um, and it's, you know, a lot of passing out, moving, dropping off, transferring ball from one foot to the other foot. And, you know, yeah. I mean, again, probably in our day, we had a strong foot and we had a foot that we literally used to stand on and that was it. <laughs> exactly. You know, whereas nowadays you see the goalkeepers are very comfortable and capable of transferring a ball from one foot to the other foot and clearing or passing it to, you know, their teammates further up the pitch. So, you know, you have to adjust with that. And the other thing, the other thing that frustrates a little bit is the handling. Because yeah. when we work, when we, when I, I, I serve goalkeepers, we focus on catching the ball. And as soon as they, they go from a training field to even a practice match, that goes out the window. The, the right. thought of trying to catch a ball goes out the window. It's, it's, it's less deflect, you know, caught... Because, you know, sometimes I don't think they realise that after times that they deflect for corners, they're putting themselves under more pressure. The only goalkeeper that I've seen really currently is Alisson at um, Liverpool, who, who does look to try and catch the ball. when Even when it's a diving shot, he looks to try and catch it. So, I mean, that's, yeah. that, they're the main things. And obviously, we, we all know what the, the balls do nowadays. The balls move around a, a lot more than they used to in our day. You know, the weight of the ball has changed quite significantly. Yeah. yeah you know what else I've, is... I've, I tell you what else has changed is the rugby style tackling on the goal line. So clearly that opening game for Burnt Leno for Arsenal against Brentford, Arsenal deserved to be on the losing side. But for that second goal, did you yeah. see how much he was getting tugged on the goal line? I mean, it. what were your thoughts on that? Is, is that going to be something that creeps into the game more? I think... Um... Well, I know what I would have done. I would I wouldn't have let myself get in that position to be pinned by exactly Pontus Jansen. That that's the that's either a little bit of naivety, may you know, maybe just wasn't now. You just don't let people pin you like that. You even if you take you walk them away and, and just as the ball's coming, you give them a little nudge away from you, 
they're, they're, that's acceptable nowadays. And, um, you know, he got himself in a position where he, he just couldn't move and attack the ball. And, and it should have been his ball to deal with. Yeah. But it, it didn't even look like he tried to move out of no. the way. You know, he didn't like try and push him or anything. You know, and I've always said that when, as soon as somebody comes in on you like that, you get your arms up in the air so you can't get pinned in. And then you shout to the referee, yeah, ref, exactly. just watch this. And then, he, and then if he's still doing it, take him somewhere where you know you don't want to be because he'll follow you. Yeah, and then just as then the ball's get coming in, in, get into your position. Because then, if yeah. he tries to block you as you're moving, then it's it's, it's yeah. so much more obvious. Um, it's just like it's experience, and he should have got he should have got loads of it. And I was just so disappointed in the way that he dealt with that situation, and then his reaction wasn't big enough either. You know, he just put his arms up, and it was as though he just put his arms up because they'd let a goal in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the that's the thing is that I think that he was probably thinking, I'm going to get a foul for this. Yeah. You know, but the referee's got to see it, and all right, we've got VAR, which which can help. But you know, you can probably say that he could have really got away from him if he wanted to. Yeah, and, and I saw it happen in that position. If someone's got, like, you know, we got held in a few neck holds, you know, things like that. But if you want to get away from him, you get away. <laughs> they from must him. have been tall players. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most well, of them we, grabbed we, us in, you know where. I can oh, no. say that. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot more going I think it again in our day it was a lot more humour in the game you know that we had people we knew and the things that used to go on on set plays when someone would come up to you and, and have a little tickle un undo your laces and things like that you know, it's just it was ridiculous some of the things that went on oh yeah yeah <laughs> brilliant what um, what do you think is going to happen this weekend mate I think it's going to be another tough day for the the Gooners I know I know um you know, I think that uh, obviously people are already looking at Arteta and asking questions. And Chelsea have, have obviously just strengthened in a, a oh. massive way. You know, getting Lukaku in is a fantastic yeah. sign. Because I, I used to like Chelsea when, when Giroud played. Mm -hmm. Because he yeah. gave them a different, a different dimension, a different aspect and a, a, a different target, you know. I mean, Tammy was, was a big lad, but he wasn't as strong in the air as, as Giroud was. Um, yeah. But I just think that, you know, it might add a different dimension to Timo Werner's game. You know, Werner's been, he's got that pace and he can stretch teams, but yeah. but unfortunately for him at the moment, he hasn't been finishing. Um, and Lukaku would like to play with his back to the goal, set it up, maybe get, get Timo Werner running past him and then getting in the box to receive a cross or a little pass setback from, from Werner. So I think that... Yeah. It could change Werner's game, but I just think Lukaku is a is a massive plus for Chelsea. I saw I saw Werner doing an interview as there were like the, with the speculation that Lukaku was coming and he was really excited about it. You know, the fact that he Lukaku would be the target man and they'd be able to flick it on for him and yeah. use him as a you know to hold the ball up and just play him in. So yeah, he looked really excited about it. What, so I think he, sorry, I think he feels that he'd be the one that will be playing alongside him as well. I think that, you know, it could be Havertz the one that's the, the make way for Lukaku. So I, I feel that Werner's quite pleased that Lukaku's type of player has, has come into the club. You're mentioning all these attackers. I mean, there's Ziyech as well, Pulisic, Mason Mount, yeah. Havertz. Who are you keeping an eye on, as well as Lukaku, if you're Leno? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> He'll probably wait, be looking at the centre-halves because he knows that they're the ones who are causing problems. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah. so, um, I think for is, me, he needs to keep his eye on his own back four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they weren't. Listen, it's all, it was always going to be a tough game for Arsenal going to Brentford. First game at the top flight. New, the, the new. Although the stadium's been, they've been playing here for six to eight months. They haven't had no fans in, so it was always going to be a tough night for them. But you know, the performance was was disappointing. Oh, they didn't show poor, too much character, they? did they? No, they didn't. They didn't show hardly anything. You know, and like Bob Wilson's been on, he was like, "Yeah, but we had like sixty-five percent possession." And this, and I like Bob I said, "Like, don't don't go there because you know we were really poor in that game. You know, we, they, their goalie made one really good save, yeah. Um, but you know, we didn't really threaten. And you know, people are saying you know that we that we got out for and they had more enthusiasm and more desire and all that sort of stuff. The only the only good thing about this weekend was that so like. Leeds, uh, Arsenal got beat Friday. Leeds got thrashed Saturday. Tottenham won on yeah. Sunday. Yeah. But luckily, I was away salmon fishing on Friday and Saturday, so I didn't have to. 
<laughs> so I didn't have to put up with all of it. I, just, I was just looking at the scores on my phone. I'm thinking, oh no, oh, I just have to have another cast then. <laughs> This was well, it wasn't thing. your weekend, David. <laughs> this, no. this was probably a thing that you don't know about Dave as well. <laughs> I don't want to tell him this, Dave. But we used to, obviously, when we, we got together with England, we used to run together at, at Burnham Beaches. And unfortunately, Dave used to bring Carp Monthly along to the room. I, I, used, to bring, I used to bring magazines that were a little bit more interesting. <laughs> but if you were having trouble were they high sleeping, up the shelf? <laughs> yeah, the top, they're the ones. <laughs> if you were having trouble sleeping, though, insomniacs, that's what you reach for, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we said <laughs> <can't> monthly <laughs> <laughs> and cart <can't> fever. <laughs> it's true that I used to. It used to be on the fishing store. <laughs> <laughs> um, was it confusing when you were on um, England Duty together and someone would go, Dave? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, the big one. Oh, no, you'd tilt your boat all. <laughs> yeah, well, I was say, the strange thing was, was um, Bobby Robson, when he had to tell, like, we before the World Cup in, in 90, it, we had a training camp of 26 players and there was obviously four of us that weren't going to be in the, in the squad to go to Italy. And, and I always felt I was number four. But again, me and Dave were rooming together and Bobby Robson had said, right, you know, I'm going to come around and see the boys later on and tell them, you know, unfortunately I won't be travelling. And the knock came on our door and there's me and Dave in the room. And Bobby came in and typical Bobby was always smiling and, and tries <laughs> to make a laughter of a situation that obviously is going to be a bit difficult. And uh, he came in and he, he looked at me and he went, Dave, I've got some great news for you. And I'm thinking, <laughs> he's going with me. And I'm thinking, what's Dave thinking? And he, went, he went, Dave, I've got some great news for you. You don't have to train anymore. But but I think I was, I was in good company because I think it was me and the, the three other Arsenal boys, weren't it, Dave? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think it was. It was, it was uh, Alan Smith, Tony Adams, and was it Rocky or was it Michael Thomas? I think it might be Michael. I'm not yeah, Michael sure. Thomas, yeah. 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 So. No, but, I, but I, do you know what? That, that is so, so weird because I had something very similar to that with Graham Taylor when they were getting their squad ready for Euro 92. And he, he said the same. If you, if you don't get a phone call, meet in the room at like six o'clock. You know, so okay, so like there's me and Dicko in there, and, and Dicko was injured, so he knew he wasn't going. No phone call. So I go to the meeting, and I walk in, and I see Wood, Chris Woods, Nigel Martin, and then I sat down, and I was like, surely there's only two of us going. And then Laurie McMenemy came up to me, he went, Dave, he says, uh, what, what are you doing? I went, I don't know. He went, Oh, I need to have a chat with you outside. So I'd already I'd gone into the meeting with oh, the lads. Man. And then had to be pulled out and then told I weren't going. He took Nigel Martin as his number two. Oh. <laughs> but you obviously got back in again, didn't you? You was back in for 96, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah. That was when Terry, Terry came up to me and said, right, you're my number one. I was like, yes. <laughs> Did you find out why they'd missed you off the list beforehand? Oh, me? Yeah. You just forgot. Yeah. Just forgot about me. Hmm. Graham Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> I, remember, oh no, I remember Pete Benetti coming up to me. I was like, Pete, don't bother. Leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> but what um, I spoke to Ashley Cole a while ago, Bez, and he said to me that when he went to Chelsea, that their, the winning mentality was so much higher and more expectation than what it was when he was at Arsenal. Which really shocked me. Did you? Were you were aware of anything like that? Well, I mean, when I was at Chelsea, it wasn't. I mean, they hadn't won a trophy from 1971, and the, and we got some silverware, but it was only the Zenith Data Trophy. <laughs> so we had a trip to Wembley against Middles, and that was the day you lot were doing the um, World Cup song. What was it? <laughs> and and we, we couldn't do it because I think it was only me and Tony Tony Rigo. I don't think any miserable boys were in there. Oh, Pally might have. No, Pally. Would Pally have been in it? I'm not sure. Could have been. He might have, he might have been in the initial squad. No, he couldn't have been too early, I think. Although he might have been, yeah. But um, yeah, we you done the, the uh, 
the song, the, the you know the John Barnes. Uh, oh, with his rap. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> and we, we we were playing a game, so we couldn't go to the recording of that that song. Oh no, that was all right. Don't worry. Yeah. I'm sure you. And what's your since. voice like? Is it? Were we missing out? Uh, <laughs> I normally get put to the back further away from the microphone. So I've got a cut, unless they want a deep voice, you know, like a, is it, what's this it? This could have been strategic, is what I'm thinking. Well, it's it's just dawned on you, hasn't it? They that's, actually I'm made thinking, it well, clash. Final. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was pretty arranged before we got to the final. But yeah. Maybe that was maybe the thing, fighting for us to get the final, yeah. So, <laughs> but no, I mean, David, Chelsea in, in the days when I was there was a, was a completely different club to... Right. You know when a brand, well, I think it was it was when Glenn Glenn came to the club, um, and that was when I more or less left. So um, I think he started to change the mentality of the players because he, he brought he brought he brought players in of the quality of Rude Hullet and, and, and Mark Hughes and, and, yeah. and people like that. Yeah, so he, he brought he brought big names in, and, yeah. and he was getting the backing. So uh, I think it was only when the money came and the bigger players came, then that mentality changed. And, and like you know, obviously I'm still connected to the club and you can see it and, and around mm. everywhere you go that they expect to win mm. um and and they were on that that tremendous run where they you know reached finals and, and won oh. titles under yeah. Mourinho and so um yeah but I, I, straight I wouldn't have thought the contrast was was I mean when you were there what, what was your mentality like yeah it was well we were expected to win you know and, and, I mean and it was I mean, disappointing that, it was, if, yeah, if we if we just got top four, we were like that was a bad season. You yeah. know, we were we were either winning it or second. Yeah, and you know, then hopefully win a trophy. You know, European or FA Cup or League Cup, whatever. But yeah, it just it was just something. I, I, it really surprised me when Ashley said that. You know, and he he gone through because he was he was in the Invincibles, weren't he? Yeah, he, was he was he there for the Invincibles? I'm pretty sure. Did he? I'm he sure wasn't. He, was. he wasn't in the. Um, I don't know. I... Were, were the Invincibles not with Nigel? No, oh me, no, oh me. I had John. I had John as well. Nigel had left. It was oh, Ashley. It was, I think Adam's it looking was it up. That's right. It was Vieira, well. wasn't it? It was Vieira and yeah, yeah, yeah. Saul, Saul Campbell, Martin yeah. Keown. I think he was. Just. Sure, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, yeah. It he was. was Ashley, wasn't it? You know, and so like for him to say that, I, you know, then then he left probably a year later or something. And you know, just it was just something that I was really surprised at. But I recently went into when I did Soccer Aid and they, they had it at Chelsea, which was like two years ago, just before COVID. We were in the home team dressing room, and on the wall, I don't know if you've seen it, but you must have done. Is they've got all their trophies that they've won, like painted on the wall. Yeah. And I was like, oh my god, like that they won everything, haven't they? And like quite a few times as well. Yeah. Yeah, but that's that's again that's been in recent recent years, and and it has been since Abramovich has, has come into the club. Yeah, um, you know they they've had money to spend, um, but they they brought the success with it. So um, you know you're looking at other clubs that have had lots of money to spend that that haven't had the success that Chelsea have had. Yeah. So you know, you know you, yeah. you've got the money, you've got to spend it wisely. You've got the players that have got the that winning mentality, and I think that's a, that's what you know when you had John Terry at the club when you had. Did a job, but you know those players are at an expectation of the players around them as well. So, <clears throat> and I think that that's the other thing that I feel that has changed in the in the modern day football a bit is that you have players that are leaders that you know are not frightened to tell someone when they don't think they're doing it, or you know they've, they've let someone go and they they're not on their toes. They get onto them, yeah. and I just feel that in the modern day that doesn't happen as much. And I think that because players for some reason seem to take offence to being told in no uncertain terms that, you know, someone doesn't think they're doing their job properly. That's yeah. interesting, actually, because I would say from a media perspective, I have an observation and obviously I've never been inside the playing staff. I don't know what goes on behind closed doors. I just know my dealings when I'm waiting to do post-match interviews after Premier League games. And I've been doing that for eight, eight nine seasons now. And my observation with Arsenal is that when they lose or they don't, they get a result that they don't particularly expect, even if it's a draw, but with maybe lower opposition, it is really difficult to get someone out to talk. And often we get presented with this player is going to do it. Now, 
often what I do is I'll give sort of three options. Um, it's quite a regular thing that if on, on the final whistle or sort of 80 minutes, I would send to a floor manager, you know, these are the three people that have been the story of the game. If we could get one of those three and at Arsenal, hardly ever do you get a say, you know, you're just given someone who's willing to yeah. talk. And I just wonder whether that represents something within the culture, you know, a lot of other clubs, I mean, there are other ones that that are similar to that as well. I'm not saying it's just Arsenal, but I just wonder what that brings with it because giving Chelsea as an example, they often put up a lot of the players. Yeah. And I thought that contrast going into this weekend is interesting because as you pointed out, David, you know, Chelsea have been on the receiving end from Arsenal in recent seasons. Yeah. Yeah. I, but I, I wonder if that. if that happened again, would, would, were you put up all the time and did you mind doing it? Did you have that chance when you were there to say, nah, I'm not going to do it today? Yeah, we, we did have the chance to say no. Um, but I think I mean, what you're saying, I think it's more that the players are realising now how much pressure they're under. You know, because they, they, haven't, they haven't performed for the last, what, two seasons now you know, like they should do. And I just feel that it's, I don't know, I don't know what it is that they don't want to talk because they're afraid of getting caught out or something. It's, all, it's yeah. always difficult, isn't it, after a game if you've lost and, you know, there's going to also be questions put to you that are going to be quite testing to the fact that is it the performance, is it the individual, has someone else let the team down? And, and you've got, I mean, the modern day player is obviously far better coached in in you know doing interviews, handling media situations yeah. than than we were, mm-hmm. um, so you do get a lot lot more people in front of the camera that I think look very comfortable and they speak very well. Yeah, um, they do. Yeah, but I, I, I suppose I, I suppose it comes back to the leadership thing though, doesn't it? Because I, get, I, like my team's wolves, and you know, come rain or shine, whatever, Connor Cody will be put forward. Yeah. And does that not also scream that? that's the the character that's lacking a little bit yeah it's I mean, leaders uh, isn't it he's, you know, he's, exactly leaders he's that... a spokesman he's a leader on a pitch he's a spokesman for the, the players in the dressing room um but you know like you're saying as well is, is it you like to see someone else out there and that that gives them that opportunity to, to to probably start leading as well on the pitch the fact that they're being put in front of the camera but i think as well with, with connor they know they've got someone who's uh who's fairly secure with what he's going to say he's he's um He's an honest player as well, and and you know I think that he's he's a type that you would like in front of the camera because you know that he's going to give you the truth. Yeah, a lot of the young lads are good at it. You know, I've, you know I've noticed um, Oxley Chamberlain when he, you know, probably about two seasons ago now when he first started coming out and saying, you know, he was brilliant in front of the camera, and then you see people like uh, Saka. You know, I just love the way that he is. You know, he yeah. just answers the question. He doesn't like try and hide or try and avoid the question. He just answers. They just answer them straight away. So I think it's because they've got a lot more confidence in what they're doing. Hector uh, bayerin has been brilliant over recent yeah. years. He's always one I think that fronts up and and will talk. And but you know, there's a lot of speculation at the minute as to whether he's going to be staying. But again, if he does go, that's another person, isn't it? Because there, there were a lot of those characters that were really, really good at media, like Jack Wilshire as well. And I know that's not a huge part, you know, what they do on the pitch is the most important, of course. But yeah. I just wonder sometimes whether it's all a little bit intrins- intrinsically linked. Yeah. Boy, you like, Liz, you, t- you spoke about Bellerin and Jack Wilshire there. They were two players that would give everything on the pitch, like week in, week out, you know, and if, all right, sometimes it weren't good enough, but they would give everything and their fans loved them for that. You know, it's a few of the others that just seem to be hiding a little bit and, and they're obviously hiding when they're um, asked to do the press stuff. But, right, I can't let Bears go without talking about that penalty save. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Your flash fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the one. You know which one. Uh. Oh, mate, I remember watching that and I was like, go on, Bez. <laughs> Where was you? Well, I have no idea. Probably on England duty, weren't we? That's what I'm wondering, because a lot of people yeah. that I'd, even the lads that kind of come through the leagues with Wimbledon that had left the season, we kind of, we won the cup. And, and uh, you know, Kevin Gage, who was at Villa at the time, he, he says, we, we was on a, end of season trip where I was in a bar in Magaluf or something like that, you know, and we're all cheering you on. And, you know, so yeah. 
You need yeah. to have a word with the football scheduling gods, you do. <laughs> no. I think I prefer to be playing in cup finals and uh, yeah. on, on England duty rather than going. What, on overseas what did you do? Did you know or did you just guess? I mean, you know, in, in those days, Liverpool were the team, weren't they? You know, they yeah. were the best team, the team of the decade. And so we, we didn't get the opportunity as we do nowadays to see every goal, every free kick. You know, yeah. Every incident you get a chance to to look at, and even if it's not, you don't catch it on TV. With with all these like Y scouts and things like that, you get the opportunity to look at things. And um, I was fortunate that uh, we'd seen Liverpool a few times, and on one of the occasions it was a semi final. John Aldridge took a penalty against um, against the Forest, and <laughs> this, this is the start of it. <laughs> The sleepover yeah, but, you're having. Yeah, yeah. the dogs bark in there. It's is like, it all dogs, is it? Oh, no, it's not, it's not all dogs. But, sorry, but, I'm, I'm, yeah, it's all dogs. Well, you're saying that. We're, we're, we're going away and um, oh, we get back to the goalkeeping thing because I don't mind talking about that. All right. <laughs> we, we got to put the dog in in um, like a, a home, a hotel. Yeah, yeah. And they, they went for a, a play date. What? Oh, the dogs did yeah. to see if they get on with yeah, the they, other they, dogs. They do to each other, yeah. So, what have you got? Oh, it's a you know those big um, what are they called them? Um, it's a cavapoo. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. I'm about to get I, I, a I'm about to get a Yorkie poo. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that means it's got li little legs, doesn't it? Yeah, a little <laughs> bit littler. Yeah. Little legs, yeah. Anyway, back to the um. The thing, but I mean, I'd seen Aldo take many a penalty, um, and he done that started, didn't he? Yeah. He came out and stopped just before it, and and that's what I thought. The, the, the thing was, was the FA Cup in those days was was huge, it was massive, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the build up was unbelievable, wasn't it? You know, from from the semi final, I think we had we had five games and we didn't win one of those games because our focus was just on the yeah. on the final and and everything. The build up the, the week prior to it is just you know media days training open training session and and motty came down john motson came down and dave you know there's never been a penalty saved in the cup wow. final and, and if yeah. if it just happens this weekend and john aldridge he's got 13 out of 13 penalties or something like that this season <laughs> what's what's your thinking and i told him like i said you know i, I feel that he, he does this little stutter and if i can stand still he'll go to my left more often than not keepers move and you know make their mind yeah. up for him so Listen, I, I still moved. Yeah, I can see in the day I've got, I've gone, but he probably. Oh, but you were still full stretch. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean that that's the good thing. It was it was, a proper save. It was a good save. You know, that's you know, the thing was was from the corner. It was this easiest thing I had to do all day. Like John Barnes clipped it to near post. I dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was one of, it, it was good because you know, like everyone was like euphoric and a uh, fast jump to me and was at my knees and things like that and. And it kind of kicked me back into listen, you know, we we still got a game to yeah. play here. You know, you haven't, right. you haven't done it just because you saved the penalty. So um yeah, I mean it was the fact that we won it was the main thing, you know, because Yeah, but you lifted it as captain as well, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, that was that was huge. That was, I never I never forgot that. I never forgot like that big smile on your face as well. And yeah. you know, I was lucky to my last ever game for Arsenal was was very similar. You know, I, I was captain for the day and I lifted yeah. it and it and it's just yeah, I just wanted to try and get a smile as big as what yours was on the day. Oh, you, <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, you definitely, you had it more often than me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but not as captain, mate. <laughs> Once yeah. as captain, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Those big moments, does time stand still? Um, yeah, you just... I, uh, I don't know, it's, 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 tough to, it's tough to describe because, you know, the, the, the time in... You kind of... Are, it's one of the things that if I could have dreamt the night before... It would have been exactly as you dream. Your dream yeah. was going, you know, we're winning one nil, they get a penalty, I save the penalty. We win the cup, I go and get the trophy. It would have been your dream. But when yeah. it's actually happening, you're thinking, oh God, you know, like if they score, you know, we knew that if they'd scored, they were going to win the game. That was it. You know, we we yeah. we was doing our utmost to keep them and we scored the goal, which was, you know, obviously brilliant from our point of view. But the fact is, if they had scored first, I think we might have lost the game. But then again, that season, we lost um, two one at Anfield and drew one one at our place. So the games were the games were tight. Yeah. 
Brilliant. Bears, it's been amazing having you on, mate. It's been a pleasure. It's been great to see you again. Always good to see you and everyone what, else. What are you up to now, by the way? I'm not. I'm not doing it. I'm not, like I say, my body's telling me I, sh I should have stopped uh, doing a lot of things earlier, but playing a bit of golf. Nice. Doggy now. play dates. <laughs> yeah, doggy play dates, sleep. <laughs> I, I can't do any sleepovers anymore. I get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, oh, I like the cushion, nice by the way, part. in the background there. Hey. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I was, I was going to ask you about that, about the uh, the old Saints days. Yeah. I mean, the, I, 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 I don't know what it is with me, but I went to Newcastle. You know, after the cup, I went to Newcastle and um, they were just starting to change their stadium and, and there was a boardroom battle. I had to go. Obviously, it was like last in, first out because they needed the money. And then Newcastle became a big club. St James's was a fantastic stadium. After yeah. I left, I go to <laughs> I go to Chelsea. They got the dog track around the outside. Used to park the disabled cars behind the car <laughs> behind the goal. I leave Chelsea. They turn the stadium into a fantastic. <laughs> place. I go to the Dell. We we play at the Dell. It was a it was a great place to play because it was yeah. great it was atmosphere. A, a great atmosphere. Yeah. It was always yeah. difficult to for the opposing teams, apart from Arsenal when Wrighty got out trick against me <laughs> early on in the season. We, I think it was four one when it day. I think it was four yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> and then I leave I leave Southampton and they go to St Mary's, and it just and, and then and then late really late on I end up at Brighton and they were playing at the Amex, not the Amex, that that um with Dean. With Dean, that was it. I can you remember? Yeah, the with Dean. Yeah. Another running track around the outside. Yeah. No atmosphere whatsoever. And then a few years later, they're at the, the Amex, which is a great stadium. So <laughs> one of what it is, I, I like to think that probably because they, they got me off the ways bill, they managed to get a full <laughs> yeah. be alive. But who <laughs> needs a new stadium? You need to go and be on the on, on the uh, on the wage bill for someone who needs a new stadium, then leave. That's exactly yeah. 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 It's that worth that a lot of stadiums, it is. <laughs> modern day salaries would be very nice. Rafa, no, I, Rafa will be on the phone to come as goalkeeper coach because that stadium, <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> yeah. I, I very much remember seeing you a, a few times as, as a kid. Um, it was you and uh, Grobbler back in the day. It was um, yeah. you, you guys well, playing. Oh, that that would have been the time where Grobbler was going through some. Yeah, well, that was the thing because that you probably see some of Southampton's best, well, Tiz's best, best years anyway. Yeah, I did. He was, he was just giving. We a hear a lot over. about Tiz. Oh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Tiz was, was brilliant, but he was literally ball. He said to him, "Do what you when you've got the ball, you work your magic." When we've lost the ball, you just find a space. Don't bother trying to tackle. Don't bother, you know, tracking back. Because you're crap at it. <laughs> the, other, the other 10 will work their nuts off to get the ball back. Give it to you, you work. And it worked. Yeah. And I, I fell out with Bawley because of it, strangely enough, because uh, I said to him, I said, you know, you, you've got to stop giving Tiz all the praise. The media's doing all that. You've got to look after the other 10 players. And just, <laughs> you know, and in, the end, in the end, he brought Bruce in. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> That was his way of telling me what I what he thought of me. I think. Yeah. Oh God! <laughs> nice one, Buzz. Yeah. All right, mate. Lovely. Cool. Brilliant. Thanks okay. a lot, mate. Good to speak, you all. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. 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 <laughs>